All right. Hello, everyone. Hello. So my name is Martin. And I'm Hannah. I'm an acupuncturist. So am I. I got my helmet. I don't. I'm ready to go. Are you? Uh, yeah. We're going to be talking about concussions. And uh, helmets are pretty important. They are. What do you think of my helmet? I think you'll go really fast. Yes. <laughs> well, hopefully I won't talk too fast. So I just wanted to have some bit of fun. But uh, I'll take this off. Um, pretty cool helmet. Uh, I don't know how safe this is, though. <laughs> it's very aerodynamic. It looks good. Okay, so uh, we're going to talk about concussions. And... Uh, Concussions are uh, actually, uh, before we decided we were going to talk on this topic, uh, we didn't know like there was going to be a lot of talk about it uh, but recently. Uh, you might have heard that there's this new, uh, it's called the Rowan, Rowan's Law. Rowan's Law. It's new legislation in Ontario. And uh, so I'm glad that that's out. I'm glad that more people are talking about this uh, because this is a serious topic. Uh, this is a topic that affects obviously athletes. Uh, but it also affects kids, it affects everybody. And uh, we're gonna give you pretty much uh, the basics, the one-on-one -on -one about concussions. I think this is applicable to anybody. If you have kids, for sure you're gonna wanna listen to this. If you do sports, uh, you're gonna wanna listen to this. Um, this is, uh, even if you're an adult, um, and in, you know you can fall, you can have- Car accidents. Car accidents, uh, there's a lot of great information. And we're gonna start off by uh, this questionnaire. I always like to do questionnaires, by the way. And uh, you know, if you're online, please, uh, you, you can write comments. I'm gonna refer here. Um, hopefully I'll be seeing ourselves pretty soon. Oh, I think I just saw us. Um, so, I know we're on. Uh, so I'm just, uh, even though I can't see us right away, eventually I will and I'll be able to interact with you. This is always meant to be very interactive, and uh, if you are um, here for the first time on Facebook Live with us, uh, say hi, uh, love to know where you're coming from. And up, oh, there we are. Okay, so I know we're on. Uh, so I'll be able to see now your messages, and we're good to go. So we're gonna start off with a questionnaire, and um, I'm gonna be, drilling you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to question you okay. and I'm questioning you. And it's a true or false, so pretty, you've got some good odds. Um, so the first question I'm going to ask is um, um, true or false? If I did not lose consciousness, uh, wait, how do I phrase this? Um, so I did not receive uh, if you did not go unconscious, Thank you. did you still have a concussion? <laughs> yes, yeah? that's kind of, that's what I'm trying to say. So if you did not lose consciousness, um, could you have still had a concussion? Could you have still had to receive a concussion? Yeah. So what's the answer? The answer is you could have had a concussion still. You don't need to lose consciousness. Okay, good. Um, that's correct. Um, question number two. Uh, before you say it, I, I want to see if some people can, can follow and participate. Question number two, um, in order to be qualified as a concussion, you have to receive a hit to the head. What do you think? Okay, so <laughs> uh, there's a bit of delay, so I can't see the comments right away, but um, I know there's some people, so what do you think? Please go ahead and write some comments. Uh, what do you What do you say? The answer is false. It's false. You don't have to have a direct hit. It doesn't have to get hit by the head to be qualified to sustain a concussion. Um, you need to receive a hard hit. Like you have to get hit fairly like hard in order to qualify as a concussion. True or false? False. False. Oh. <laughs> um, okay. Next question. If you do get hit, it'll be obvious that it is a concussion. No. No? No. <laughs> oh. It could be hours, days even. Okay, we'll talk about that. Um, next question. I don't know if we can get some people to interact with us. Next question. You have to, let's say you have a child and um, 
you have to make sure that you wake up your child every hour at night uh, to make sure that they're okay. True or false? False. False. Oh. So you don't have to wake them up? You don't have to wake them up. Oh. Even you can go to bed. Okay. Here's one that I think you might not know. <laughs> so, uh, male athletes report more uh, concussions and more severe symptoms than their counterparts, um, female athletes. Give me Wait, let's see if anybody okay. here can... Uh... I have a theory. You have a theory? I have a theory. Hello, Renee. <laughs> wrong. Okay. Yeah, most of them are wrong. So what's your theory? My theory for this, based on statistics, all research I've done is that females report concussions and have more symptoms. But specific to athletes, I'm not sure. But I know in general, females report concussions more. You are correct. Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> You're very good at this. Um, yes. So we just brought up some really interesting questions. Uh, do you have to get hit in the head? No. Um, you do not necessarily need to uh, stay out the whole night. Uh, we talked about how it's not going to be obvious. We're going to go into a lot more of these details. Uh, but before I do, I want to share a little story. Uh, so this actually happened uh, with my family and us uh, over the March break. Uh, we were out playing uh, in the woods. Uh, we were having a lot of fun. Uh, we were sledding down a big hill. and. Um, I was pulling that, pulling uh, my daughter Annie that was in the sled, and uh, without realizing, she hit a tree, and she hit her head on a tree, and uh, you know it was very right away. She was crying. I asked her if she was okay, um, and uh, you know it was a hard hit, and uh, we, uh, we 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 we. Checked her out a bit. We we looked at her and we saw that uh, she looked like herself, like she was fine. Uh, everything was okay. Um, but uh, the next day we checked her out again to make sure she was okay and she looked fine. Um, and then um, we noticed that she was sleeping a lot more. So um, the like the past week she's been sleeping a lot. Um, a lot, lot more, and she does that sometimes, and it's tricky with kids. So my daughter, she's uh, just turned five. Um, <clears throat> so the point of this story is, that I don't know if she has. We we never ended up bringing her to the hospital uh, because we thought she was fine, and we kept checking up on her. Uh, but she went through a period of about three days where she just slept, and she slept a lot more than what she normally does. Um, so. We, uh, we keep checking up on her and she keeps looking fine now and she's, she's kind of returned back to her normal patterns. Um, but it was just interesting to see that. And, you know, I don't know if she did receive a concussion or not, but um, she did get hit by a head. Several days later, she asked to sleep a lot more. Uh, she was tired. Um, you know, we thought, oh, she must be growing. <laughs> But um, looking back now, maybe she wasn't growing. Maybe she did receive uh, a concussion. So, so there's a lot to talk about this. And, um, and if you're going to have questions, please go ahead and write them down. But um, I guess uh, one of the first things that I want to talk about are some of the symptoms. So um, can you tell us a, a bit about the symptoms? If, uh, if you're maybe playing a sport, you... You know, the common, like, typical idea is when we think of a concussion, we think you're playing football, you're playing hockey, you're playing soccer, you collide with some, uh, a team player or board. you know, sort of boards or whatever. And then, um, so what kind of symptoms could we look for? Yeah, so there's four categories where symptoms tend to fall in. There's reported 60 possible symptoms, so it can definitely range. Um, but the four main categories are physical. Um, cognitive, behavioral, mood, and sleep. Um, so physical is kind of the most common one I think that people think about. So people get hit in the head, they're gonna have a headache, they're gonna have neck pain, um, they're gonna be tight possibly in their shoulders. 
Um, but then you have all these other ones that people don't necessarily think about. So people can lose focus. And with sleep is that after concussion, people will want to sleep more. They'll feel more fatigued. Um, but then after some time, it'll actually be harder to sleep. So a little bit of a wave there. Um, change in personality and behavior. These are all different symptoms that can happen from a concussion, but often don't, they're not really reported and seen until after the hit, um, days or weeks after even. Okay. Um, and is there any testing, like let's say that you see some of these symptoms, is there any testing that can be done to, you know, once you're at the hospital, once you've seeked out medical attention, uh, what kind of tests would, would they normally do? Um, they're going to do a neurological test to see what's actually happening, but in terms of testing, there's not a ton that they're going to do. There's now a new test that you can do with your blood um, for up to a week after a concussion. Because you hit your head, there's different neurotransmitters and proteins that uh, change in your body chemistry, and they can actually test for a certain protein now for up to seven days after a hit. So they can determine if there is a concussion that way. That doesn't mean that they have a treatment for you. Um, they can also do brain scans, but that's only going to show if there was a fracture to the skull or if there was swelling. So again, that's really just if it was a severe hit, they'd be able to tell. But in general, there's not a lot of testing other than to see what kind of symptoms you're presenting with. Okay, so let's say you did have a fall or you got hit. Uh, you went to the hospital, they did the blood, they checked the protein, confirmed, or they maybe they just obviously you're you know you're not you're you're showing some of the common symptoms uh what's next what's the best thing you can do the best thing you can do is rest um if you've damaged your brain um, it's funny how my daughter that's what she did no your body knows what it wants so it just wants to rest um it's the best thing you can do um to let the brain heal the tissues heal the nerves heal um, after that, like again, it's all going to go back to what symptoms you're presenting with. So if the symptoms are kind of persistent, um, that in itself is termed post-concussion syndrome. So it's when the symptoms of concussion persist for longer than a couple of weeks. Um, so what they'll do is they'll often, well, first and foremost, rest. So that's persisting. Depending on the symptoms, they'll possibly recommend different therapies such as physiotherapy, um, chiropractic, massage. Um, a lot of times medications are prescribed to help with sleep or pain. Um, and then there's acupuncture and chiropractic, which actually we're familiar with. Um, so it's all going to be based on what kind of symptoms people are showing. Sorry, I just had to walk away to make sure we were still being recorded. Um, okay, so we talked about some of the treatments. Um, Let's talk about prevention. Prevention? Okay. okay. Well, we saw one. The helmet. Yes, my helmet. The beautiful helmet. Should I bring it back? Of course. Okay. <laughs> so, I remember when I was growing up, you were too cool to wear a helmet. If you wore a helmet, you were weak. You were not one of the cool kids. You were a geek. You were a geek. You were... I'm hoping that's changed for kids. Am I a geek? <laughs> no, but you're a safe geek. Okay. <laughs> Um, but yeah, you're not too cool to wear a helmet. You need to protect your head. Oh, should um, I tie? Is this, is this enough? Or like... No, I'll tighten it up a bit. Yeah. Okay, make sure it's properly fitting, of course. Um, but yeah, paying attention to your surroundings. So something as simple, again, concussions aren't just for athletes. They're for people who just exist, really. So if you're walking down the sidewalk, what kind of obstacles could be in your way? We just finished, hopefully finished winter. Um, are you salting? Are you putting sand down? Could there possibly be slips there? Um, for people who maybe have mobility issues, um, getting in and out of the bathtub, is there a proper rail or hand dryer? Can you go up and down the stairs safely? Um, so just being aware of your surroundings and eliminating any possible threats, even slippery floors. Um, put on a rug. It's that simple. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like, um, you know, we have wooden stairs. We're not, as soon as we move to, uh, to this location, like when we move from Toronto back here, I saw the wooden stairs and I just remember seeing, uh, when I was a kid, we used to have wooden stairs and I slide would slide down like, I don't know how many times I, I slipped, you know, you're wearing socks and you slip and then you're sliding down the stairs. So as soon as I saw my wooden stairs, I put down these little strips uh, that cause a bit of uh, traction, a bit of grip so you can, you, you know, 
And you know what? I've never slipped down my stairs. Um, I've, I've had stories of patients coming to see me where um, they just slipped down their stairs and uh, major, major concussions, major uh, serious symptoms, um, could not work for a whole year. I've heard stories like that. Uh, could not, um, it affected their eyes, caused migraines, caused ulcers and things. Um, so yeah, just thinking about your surrounding, just thinking about like, what can I do to, uh, to be more safe around, uh, and, um, yeah, so. Okay, uh, do we have any questions? Hello, Paul. Um, do we have any questions that you might, uh, you know, we've talked about, um, let's talk maybe about a secondary or a, um, the chance of getting a second concussion. Yeah. So once you've had one concussion, there's research that, research that shows that you're up to three times more likely to have a second one. Mm -hmm. um, if your brain is healed, you know, it's, you still don't want another concussion, but you're a little bit better off. But if you still haven't fully he healed from your first concussion, that can cause serious issues. So if the healing hasn't happened, you have another concussion, there's a lot of reports of um, a lot of swelling in the brain. And that's the case actually with Rowan, mm -hmm. um, which kind of created this whole legislation about informing people and educating on concussions, is that she received a concussion shortly after two other concussions actually. They found there was two before that. Yeah. Um, and her brain... And she was out playing again. Yep, she was out playing rugby and she received another blow to the head and went unconscious and went into a coma right yeah. away. Um, so that's the risk of having a concussion shortly after the first one is that you know there's swelling and damage that hasn't already been healed. So if you think about it, if you've had a concussion, um, it's normal to feel like, okay, I, I'm fine, I'm, I'm, I'm okay, I'm back to my regular self. Um, but you might not realize that your balance isn't that great, that your eyes were affected, uh, that your inner ear was affected, um, that your neck was affected. You might re not realize a lot of these things and you might not be fully grounded. And you're just gonna, like, I don't know how many times I heard this story of like, somebody slipped, fell, and then had a concussion, two, three weeks later, fell again. Like, what are the odds, if you're going to fall, what are the odds you're going to fall again? Um, yeah. But the, what's happening is that your body's not exactly, not fully healed, not fully recovered, and you're just not there yet. Uh, so many times I've heard also of people uh, returning back into another sport too quickly. Uh, they, you know, they felt like, okay, I gave it to myself a good week. I feel fine, they go back and they went out running and all of a sudden now they have headaches. Um, Even for a minor concussion or a minor hit to the head, it's recommended that you rest for at least a week. And that's a minor concussion. Um, so people who have had multiple or maybe have sustained a little bit of a stronger blow, it's a week isn't even enough. So, um, we talked, you, you touched on briefly about some of the treatments. Um, one of them, I don't know if you did mention. Uh, so you, can you repeat again, what are some of the treatments? Uh, they can look for a protein in your blood, up to seven days after. No, 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 not, not, not the... Um, oh, diagnostic treatments, not, yeah. Uh, you can do uh, meds is one thing that they'll recommend to kind of mask the symptoms. Uh, you can do massage, physio, a lot of kind of physical therapies, chiro, acupuncture, mm -hmm. the rest. The number one is rest. So basically you have your brain uh, that is trying to heal and it's firing and you have nerves that are firing and what ends up happening is you become very sensitive to lights, you become sensitive to noise, your sensory system, like your sensory uh, are overloaded and it's things are just working way too much and your brain needs time to readjust, to heal and to relax. And it basically loves, it, you know, what most people will report is, I feel much better in a dark, quiet, cool, cool room. Um, so you need to, where was I going with this? Why rest is important. Oh yeah. 
Uh, so you need to rest and you need to look at therapies that will allow you to rest also. So that's why I think why acupuncture has been such, effect, such an effective tool for a lot of my patients. Uh, it's ideal, like it's like one of the best things I have found to, to help relax is get an acupuncture session. Um, at the same time, we can help encourage more blood flow to very specific areas. Um, another one that sometimes people don't think much about is uh, vision therapy. And a few weeks ago, we had Dr. Bill Clark, um, who's an optometrist who does vision therapy, and he does specialize in concussions. So there are a few other in, in Ottawa that does this as well. Um, but um, vision therapy is, is doing working your eyes because really your eyes is an extension of your brain. And um, it's the, one of the things that we have is like almost like brain, it's the same thing as brain tissue. And if you work on your eyes, you can very much work on your, on your brain. So um, that's another option that a lot of times people aren't aware of. Um, and then obviously uh, we'll talk a bit about chiropractic. You know, we're a chiropractic clinic. We're not chiropractors, but we work with chiropractors. And I've seen it to be really helpful um, because when, you're, when, you, when you receive a, a hit or uh, a lot of times the neck is a very vulnerable area and the neck uh, controls a lot, controls all the nerves that goes to the head. Um, so, and a lot of times we, when we, I remember like, I, when I was in a car accident a long time ago, um, I felt like my shoulders were like this, like weeks after, and I just couldn't bring them down. Um, it, and it's, I think like when you're going through, when I had that, this car accident, everything kind of slowed down. Have you ever been into one of those moments yes. where you're, uh, Maybe last year, <laughs> did that happen? So last year you were in a car accident, yeah. the things kind of like all of a sudden yeah. like went into slow-mo. so fast, but also it felt like an eternity. Yeah. So I think it's also very important to, um, to check, uh, check your neck uh, and to maybe get an x-ray. Uh, because so many people that I've talked to, um, they can say, you know, looking back, I do recall um, being in a car accident or you know falling down and then you know a week or two not feeling the same you know noticing that I'm more cranky more sleepy and like it's such a it's a it's like a hidden like it's this is something that can happen you don't feel you feel like you're back to your regular self and a week later all of a sudden you're grumpy well, you can associate, well, I guess I'm grumpy because somebody ate my sandwich or it's winter time, so I have to be grumpy. But then you get grumpy and then you get tired and you're like, what's wrong with me? I'm just tired. Um, so this is why we're talking about this. This is such an important subject. Uh, this is something that can, uh, and you know, Annie, you know, we're lucky, as I mentioned earlier, the story about Annie, how she got hit and uh, she looked fine and she was getting more sleep and, and now she looks like she's really fine. And, um, but the same story could have happened where Annie could have got hit by, uh, hit the tree and she's not fine. And now it's like a whole different life. Okay. So, um, I'm really glad we got to talk about this topic. I, I think more people, more people out there need to learn more about this. Uh, so it's, just to summarize, um, do you have any last minute things you would want to share? Or uh, I think the biggest thing is even if you get hit and you think you're fine, just rest. Um, especially during games, I know people who are athletes, they, especially students, they don't want to let their team down. Take the bench. Um, you have a team for a reason let them take up the slack while you make sure that you're okay. Um, I think the biggest mistake that people make is they get hit, they think they're fine, and they keep going, and then that's where the further injury happens. And I think um, my gem um, would be like, realize that, um, you know, most likely if you're watching this, you know us, but um, there, like something like acupuncture can be super helpful. Something like chiropractic can be super helpful. There's vision therapy. There's things that you can do beside taking medication, obviously. Um, but the thing is that there's a lot of people out there that don't aren't aware of this. Um, would never seek out acupuncture, 
uh, after getting receiving a concussion. And uh, so, you know, we would love for you to share some of this information. Uh, if you share this video, um, just let us know, and we'll put you in a draw. And uh, so, since we're talking about the brain. Uh, we got these brain octane bottles. Uh, this is MCT oil. It's good for your brain. So your brain's made out of fat mostly and uh, this can help you. This is a good fat and I'm going to give out this bottle. So if you share this video, go ahead and uh, write the comment saying that I shared it and I'll put you in a draw and at the end of the night uh, we'll, uh, we'll pick a winner. And somebody, and the, only, um, the only thing is that you have to come in person to pick it up. So. I'm not sending this to Halifax <laughs> if you have any okay. Nova Scotians uh, watching this. But um, yeah, so um, anything else? I don't think so. Okay, so in conclusion, um, just to recap, you can get hit and not show symptoms for up to a week later on. The symptoms include things like we talked about, dizziness, fuzziness, moods changes, behavior change headaches, uh, vision sensitivity, uh, hearing sensitivity, um, sleep issues, sleep issues uh, Focus, pa concentration. pain. Um, if you do get hit or you do suspect, uh, you don't need to be a hero. Uh, the game will go on. Please rest. Um, if somebody's encouraging you to go back in the game, uh, be, be a strong person and just say, no, I need to rest. Take the time to rest. Realize that secondary, uh, a second concussion would, could happen because you're at a much higher risk if you've received one because you're out of balance. You're not fully healed. Uh, you're not fully on at that point. So, um, and, uh, and then you don't even need to get hit by the, in the head. You don't need to have stars. You don't need to have this loss of consciousness. Uh, it could be a simple you know, movement of the neck that can cause it. So I hope you found this helpful. I hope uh, we'd love to hear from you. If you like these videos, we plan on doing more and more. Um, you know, please share this with others. It's very encouraging for us to know that what we're offering is helpful for you. And like I said, if you share this with a friend, uh, we'll put you in a name and a draw. You can win one of these nice little bottles for, for your brain. So brain, your brain is probably the most important, well, it definitely is the most important part of <laughs> Cannot live without a brain. Cannot. <laughs> and um, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.